Season 1 had come to an end for Coach Brooks and the Huskies, and it was time for his first ever offseason. Coach Brooks and the NIU Huskies finished his first year's head coach at 9-5 with a 6-2 conference record, and although the year didn't start out ideal with a 38-35 loss at home to FCS Midwest, you could say the year ended pretty well for Coach Brooks and his team, as the Huskies would end up winning the MAC championship in his first season as head coach, and they would follow up that win to close out the season with another Another big win as they would end up beating Texas State in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Ohio State would end up winning the national championship here in season number one and quarterback Cade Klubnik from Clemson was your Heisman winner. Unfortunately headed into the offseason we found out we were losing our offensive coordinator and I was a little bummed out because Leonardo Guerrero our new offensive coordinator was not a recruiting specialist like our old coordinator was. We only had two players transferring and there was only one I wanted to keep, which was Cam Crowell, who had an opportunity to be a starter this year as a redshirt sophomore. And although it looked like a low chance of us convincing him to stay, we eventually would get him to come back to DeKel. Our only other player transferring was 50 overall freshman redshirt Joshua Pridgen, so I wasn't too upset about losing him. Unfortunately, we were losing many of our key players, including Ontario Brown, who was one of the top running backs in the country this year, as well as our offensive line leader and senior center Logan Jersnitz. Ethan Hampton was also losing his top target in offense in Grayson Barnes, who was our leading receiver in yards and touchdowns this season. But what really was hurting us was losing our defense, as Javon Bird, the senior, would be leaving us, who is one of the leaders on defense in interceptions this year with three throughout the season. We were also losing our cornerback on the other side of the field in Jashan Profet, as he had two interceptions on the year and was fourth in our team leader for tackles on defense. Nate Volkersell was a another tough piece that we were losing to our defense as he was another top five tackler on our defense and was in second with three interceptions on the year. Right outside linebacker Jaden Dolphin was graduating as well and he was our leading tackler on the team with 129 tackles this past season. And lastly we were losing Jordan Hansen our starting strong safety who had 110 tackles and three interceptions on the season. Putting all the seniors combined on defense that we lost this year they scored a total of seven touchdowns for us and that was gonna be tough to replace in this upcoming season. Speaking of replacements, we still had two recruits who hadn't signed yet and that was four-star tight end Kevin Shaughnessy and three-star middle linebacker Jorge Fraboni. The transfer portal was finally opening up here in season number one as well, so this was our chance to try to snag some new targets. I only wanted three stars or a higher coming to our program as that was really the only way we were gonna build this team up. I was really hoping we could get four four-star halfback Darius Taylor to replace Ontario Brown this coming season, but we were mostly going after all defensive players in the transfer portal. The following week, we would finally get Kevin Shaughnessy to commit and Jorge Fraboni would sign on the dotted line as well. We were sitting in pretty good standings in the transfer portal as well, as we had a lead on almost all the targets we were trying to get. A lot of them were transferring in from Power 5 schools, but it didn't look like we were going to get Darius Taylor as Michigan had a pretty strong hold on him. Thankfully, it looked like we were we're going to get everyone else we were targeting in the transfer portal as three-star defensive tackle John Sheets would commit to us, three-star cornerback Nicholas Deloach, three-star right outside linebacker Daniel Brown, and three-star left outside linebacker Wyatt Wright. We would end up losing out on both halfbacks though as Cam Edwards would be going to Boston College, and no surprise, four-star halfback Darius Taylor would end up signing with his hometown school, Michigan. With all our transfers and recruits officially admitted, we had the 66 second ranked recruiting class in the country. We only had one athlete in our recruiting class though and that was the number three athlete Nick Yeast as we were moving him to quarterback and he would be a 69 overall headed in as a freshman. Speaking of quarterback though we had an interesting situation as senior Kenny Luth jumped up to a 78 overall after offseason training and last year's senior Ethan Hampton was sitting at a 77 overall so we might end up having a quarterback battle going in to season number two to see who our new starting quarterback is going to be. It was nice to see that we'd have some strength on the offensive line still as Drew Hoff would go up to an 82 overall and junior tackle Evan McCor would go up to a 77 overall. But other than that, we didn't see too many big jumps in offseason training. The quarterback room was getting a little crowded though, so we would go ahead and persuade Jalen McCon to go ahead and transfer out of the program. As after all the new recruits had been settled in, it was time to start focusing on our next recruit 
recruiting class. The number one recruit on our board was four-star free safety Quinn House, who had NIU as his top school. He was followed up by another four-star and right tackle Larry Gunderson, who also had us as his top choice. Juan Brahman was hopefully going to be the replacement for Ontario Brown in season number three, as he was a four-star halfback recruit. And while Percy Talbot, just like Juan Brahman, was also considered a bust, I will take any four-star recruit in our program at this point. Kelvin Coffey was our last four-star recruit who was a gem as well, looking to fill the right outside linebacker position, and he was already pretty close to signing with NIU. That gave us five total four-stars that we were going after and had a chance to sign here in our season number two recruiting class. We were losing most of our quarterbacks after this year, though, and Nick Yeast couldn't be alone, so we were going after three-star quarterback Patrick Adongo, and the tight end room desperately needed some depth, so we are going after three-star gem Orlando Gastineau. Another gem on our board was three-star gem athlete Quan Flanagan, and the only recruit we weren't leading for right now was three-star kicker Trent Brunt, who we desperately needed to come to our school though, because we only had two kickers who were both seniors on the roster, and I did not want a 52 overall punter KJ Stark kicking for us. We had a pretty tough schedule headed into season two as we would open up against number 14 Texas Tech at home, would be on the road to take on Big Ten opponent Maryland, and then would be on the road for another week to take on SEC opponent Mississippi State, and would finish out non-conference play at home against San Diego State. The road wasn't going to be easy for Coach Brooks and the Huskies here in Season 2, but there was one last thing that had to be done before the season could start, and that was to figure out if Kenny Luth or Ethan Hampton would be starting at quarterback for the Huskies here in Season number 2. Both quarterbacks had an upside to them, and it was going to be a tough choice for Coach Brooks to make here. And while Kenny Luth was an overall higher than Ethan Hampton, he didn't quite have the same speed or mobility that Hampton did. While his short and medium throw accuracy wasn't quite as good as Hampton's, he had a much more defined and accurate deep ball that could help us this year than Ethan did. On the other hand, Ethan Hampton was our quarterback the entire year last year, and he helped lead us to a MAC championship and a bowl victory. He had this timing down with his receivers in this playbook, and they were comfortable playing with him as they spent all year with him. His downside, though, was that he tended to hold on to the ball too long in the pocket, and his deep accuracy at times could hold us back from trying to open up the playbook and the field. Those were all things Coach Brooks was going to have to consider, as he would have a decision ready for their first game against number 14, Texas Tech at home, to open up season number two. 